When it comes to application development, form validation is really important. In Angular, we can do this in a few ways, but one of the ways we're going to look at today is going to be using the ngx formly library. This integrates tightly with Angular Material and also Bootstrap. We'll be using Material for this example. And as you can see right now on screen, I'm simply just creating a new project with the Angular CLI. And that's done by saying ng new, and then of course the name of your project. Once that has completed, we can cd into ng formally validation or whatever you called your project. We'll need to ensure that we have the Angular Forms package installed, as well as at ngx formally slash core. And if you haven't got the latest version of npm, you will of course need to add dash dash save to the end of that. So that gives us everything we need as far as using the core version of formally, but we can also use a particular UI. And this gives us just tight integration with things like Angular Material. So let's install the at ngx formally slash material package. That's everything we need for formally. The next thing we need is to install Angular Material itself. And that's done by installing the Angular slash material package and also the Angular component development kit. So that's Angular slash CDK. Step two of the material installation is also installing the Angular animations package. This allows us to, of course, use animations throughout our project. And as far as installing dependencies, that should be everything that we need. So I'm going to run up VS Code and also at the same time execute ng-serve. So here we have our standard Angular application on the right, and of course our project here on the left. Let's ensure that we have a material set up before we go any further. So this means we can head over to our app module.ts and start importing the necessary modules. So the first thing we really need is to import from the platform browser slash animations, and we want the browser animations module. So let's add that to the list of imports. Next up, I want to import the reactive forms module from angular forms. So let's do that and add that to our imports. And finally, then we also need the at ngx dash formally slash core, and that will be the formally module. And we need the formally slash material, and that will be the formally material module. So we have quite a few imports to start with. But once we get this up and running, everything should be good. So we need to add the formally module to our imports. And because this is the root module, we need to put dot for root. If we are using a feature module with formally, we'll have to use dot for child. So you will have to keep that in mind. And finally, let's add the formally material module. So that's our app module set up. We now want to go over to styles.css and what that allows us to do is import an appropriate material theme. I want to import from the Angular material package, the pre-built themes, and the theme I want to use is the indigo-pink.css. At the same time, I'll also put a blank margin and padding rule to our body. And what that allows us to do is just sort of reset our sort of view a little bit. So if we head over to our app component.html, we can then add a mat-toolbar. And the toolbar itself will have a span inside, which will say Angular formally. Now this won't work because it won't recognize the mat toolbar. So we need to go back to our app module.ts and we want to import 
the MAT toolbar module. That comes from the Angular slash material package. And you'll notice that when we do save our file, we of course get our toolbar here on screen. We can give this a color of primary and then we'll have a blue toolbar and it's what we expect from of course a material design application. Next up, let's head over to the app component.ts and I want to create a contact form. So a contact at this moment in time will be a person that has a name, a phone number and an email address. The form itself can be referenced as a form group. So let's import that from angular slash forms. We also need to provide a model for our form. So let's head over to our project. We can make a new folder called models and then a new file called contact.model.ts. We can export a class called contact and that contact will have a name, a phone number and an email. Inside of our app component, we can then give the contact model the type of our contact model that we just exported. The next thing to do is to sort of generate some fields for our form. This could be done with a contact fields and this should be an array of formally field config. If we look at the formally field config interface, you can see we have things like key, ID, name, and a variety of other options. These are things that we'll be looking at very soon. But for now, we'll simply initialize all of these things inside of our constructor. We can set up the contact form and of course make a new contact. But at this stage in the process, we also need to start thinking about the form fields that we want on the screen. Let's make our contact fields equal to a new array that contains one object with the key of name, the type of input, And we'll also add a template options object. This will give us a type of text. And we can also add a label at the same time, as well as a placeholder. Finally, we can say that this is required. So if we think about this as maybe an input field, you could see that it would have the type of text it would have a label above it and perhaps this would be inside of a div. That label would say name. We would have a placeholder on the input object itself. It would be required and so on. So basically what we're doing is we're sort of describing how our forms should look and we're leaving it up to formally to sort this out. So the next thing to do, of course, is to head back over to our app component.html and inside of here, we'll make a new form. The form will have the form group of the contact form, inside of which we'll have the formly form that will have the model of our contact model 
it will have the fields of the contact fields and the form reference will of course be that contact form once again. Let's save the file. On screen you can now see that we do have this form. And already you can see just how easy this is to of course expand on this form. So if we had our contact model and inside of here we can make a form fields function. This would return an array which would be the form field config. Don't forget to import that from of course ngx formally core. And we can take our previous element and we can add other elements such as the phone number and of course the email. So for the second one maybe we would have phone number, the type of which could be tell, the label could be phone number, the same goes for the placeholder. And we can finally repeat this once more for the email. Then back inside of our app component, instead of setting this sort of empty object at this moment, we can say that we want to set the fields equal to our contact dot form fields. So this now gets the fields from the model. We do have a slight error. We have to go back to our contact model and add that this will be an array, not simply just an object. But as you can see on screen, we then get those three form fields, all of which are reflectant of what we wanted. But if I put something in here and maybe I go off it, I'd like to have some form of error message. How do we do that? Well, we can head back over to our contact model and we can set the validation object to give out messages based on a variety of different things. So we can say required and the error message should be you need to provide a name and we can simply copy this across to the other elements. And if we save the file and then select a form item, you'll see that we then get this error message. So I guess the final thing to do at this moment in time is to head back to our app component and inside of the formly form, we can add a button. That button will be disabled only when the contact form is invalid. Otherwise, the button will have the type of submit and it will be a material raised button. We'll give it the text of submit form. And finally, we'll need to add an ng submit to the form itself. This will fire a function whenever we hit that button. So let's make a function called submit form. It will take in the contact model. And all it will do at this moment is simply log the contact model to the console in order to give the button material styling we can head back over to our app module and import the mat button module and add it to the list of imports If we then put something in the name field, the phone number field and the email field, notice how we can then type inside of the box and hit submit. 
When we do that, we get that contact object, which contains the email, the name, and the phone number. At the same time, we could also make another div. We'll give this the class of code. We'll add a H1, which describes our model. And then we'll simply look at what the model looks like as we're typing into the fields. As well as that, we can also check to see whether the form is valid. And with a tiny bit of styling, maybe something like a background color, some font color, a tiny bit of margin and padding. We can see that at the moment the form is not valid, we have an empty contact object, but as I type, the form does become valid, and of course it fills up our model. So that's how we use the NGX Formly module, along with a material design inside of our Angular applications. Oh, this new crazy mother